Thank you, Amy and um, President Reed Lee. Um, there's no teleprompter, so someone shout out if I get close to going over three minutes. Um, um, this is a very unexpected award for me, and I certainly wouldn't have guessed this might happen when I arrived here um, in 1994. Um, and 1994 was just after Sharon Bottoms, a uh, Virginia resident, lost custody of her son, Tyler Dustow, to her mother on the grounds that Sharon was a lesbian and her intimate relationship with her partner, April Wade, made her, in effect, a criminal under Virginia's Crimes Against the Nature Law, at least according to the Virginia Supreme Court that affirmed that ruling in 1994. And at that moment, I wasn't sure I would stay here. But 22 years later, I remain at William & Mary, and I'm glad I did stay. Things have changed since that moment. The U.S. Supreme Court struck down laws like Virginia's that had been used to imprison LGBTQ people or to remove children from lesbian mothers. And in 2015, same-sex, same-gender marriage became legal across the country, including here in Virginia. And the efforts of students, faculty, staff, and the administration here at William & Mary were finally successful when the college adopted anti-discrimination policies that include transgender individuals, something the Commonwealth unfortunately has yet to do. Virginia remains one of 20 states which does not include sexuality, gender identity, and gender expression in its anti-discrimination laws. Thus we stand at the crux of change not yet fully realized. And we stand witness to several other significant moments the seemingly sanctioned violence by police in various localities against black men and boys, whether armed or not, has sparked the emergence of a powerful movement, Black Lives Matter. A movement initially begun by queer women of color, Alicia Garza and Opal Tometi. A movement that also has brought notice to the increase in violence toward and murder of transgender women of color. A movement that students are making more visible on our campus through a conference this spring. And a movement reminding us that the rights of all citizens in our democracy, in our nation, must be recognized, and that the bodies and the lives of those residing in our country are sacred. And two other moments I must gesture toward that bring my acceptance remarks in conclusion back to the founding father for whom this award was named, Thomas Jefferson. One of the key stances held by Jefferson was the imperative that church and state must remain separate. As he remarked in a letter to the Baptists of Danbury, Connecticut in 1802, quote, I contemplate with sovereign reverence that act of the whole American people, which declared that their legislature should make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibit the free exercise thereof, thus building a wall of separation between church and state, end quote. At a moment when some women are denied contraception by pharmacists who argue that their religious beliefs prohibit them from dispensing such legally prescribed medications, when clinics providing reproductive health care for women, including abortion, which remains legal in this country, have been bombed or the site of shootings, and when their doctors and staff are being daily assaulted, and then when there was a firestorm over the acceptance of Syrian refugees into this country with some governors even moving to close their state's borders to such refugees, putting into stark relief the anti-Islamic sentiments of some in our nation. At this moment, I think it's important to recall that in the Virginia Statute for Religious Freedom that Jefferson authored, and which became the foundation of the religious freedom protections later delineated in our Constitution, he specifically mentioned Mohammedans, or Muslims, as among those whose faiths must be protected. Thus, in closing, in the spirit of this award, I hope in this special place William & Mary, that provides the space where the leadership this kind of work requires is produced. We might pay particular attention to Thomas Jefferson's assistance that the separation of church and state was critical to the continuing vibrancy and vitality of our democracy. I thank you for your indulgence and the college administration, my colleagues, our staff, and my students for this honor. It's my privilege to accept and hope that this new year will indeed move us past the crux of change to its realization. Thank you very much.